Uh, 470 line in the sand held out twice. Again, why 470 was so important? Uh, if you look at uh, the 60 minute view and my 60 minute view, uh, e signal for some reason has just not updated my Tesla chart after the split. But here is the 60 minute view, right? This is what we were looking at. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey everybody, good evening and uh, welcome to uh, a Wednesday edition. Happy hump day everybody. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com uh, nightly wrap up. Hope everybody had a good day, a uh, very aggressive day. We'll talk about this uh, in a second. What we saw macro today uh, was two things. Number one, uh, we saw a really aggressive rotation uh, for 90% of the day out of technology, right? Out of the, the, the names that had the biggest runs. And if you look at your charts, and again, I always encourage everybody to do so, you want to look at the stocks that had the biggest runs. And the biggest, biggest runs uh, recently uh, have been names like Tesla, have been names um, like Zoom, right? Um, Shopify had a, has been on a huge, huge run. You could go through the whole list, uh, you know, beyond, I uh, had, well, excuse me, not beyond, but uh, a lot of names like Square uh, had big, big runs. And I, I keep on saying every single day, uh, kind of almost as a daily reminder that, again, the market's just not going to, you know, tap you on your shoulder and tell you, hey, by the way, uh, you're going to get pulled right now. You're just going to get pulled. So every single day, I'm very, very conscious that, hey, we're still in a very, very aggressive bull market. But hey, if you don't pay attention and you don't see it coming, you're going to get creamed. And, and again, that's exactly what happened today uh, on the beta names. Matter of fact, the majority of technology uh, very, very early. Again, it's not going to show you in the box score. Again, if you look at uh, the scoreboard today, Dow up, uh, what, 450 points. The NASA came back screaming hot, right? Screaming hot towards the last uh, hour, hour and a half of the day. There was some sort of uh, Fed notes, a Fed minutes, whatever the hell it was. Does it really make a difference at this point? Uh, but the moral of the story is, again, I, I, I say this every day. You can't trade with rose-colored glasses. And every single day when I say, hey, guys, just got, again, look, nobody's saying we're going to get uh, Armageddon. The market's going to go to zero. We're just saying be careful every day. Be conscious that, again, the way stocks get tired when the market goes down, stocks are going to get tired on the, on the way up. And today was a perfect example that the high flyers, they all got tired, and you saw this really massive turn, right? Really, really massive turn, uh, rug pull, uh, early morning, phenomenal moves, really, really aggressive moves. Uh, again, we'll talk about that in a second. But I think the, the most important part about today, and not the individual trades, is how significant the money flow, once it comes out of one group, right, it starts getting allocated to the other. So again, kind of going into tomorrow's session, you're not going to see a lot of value, for example, in a Zoom or a Tesla or a NVIDIA or an Apple, right, or a Square or a Tulo, so forth and so on. But look at the down names, right? Pay attention. There's only 30 of these stocks. You can go through them. They'll take you, what, two, three minutes to go through the Dow stocks. Look how these things are setting up, right? Look at Triple M. Look at this potential breakout right here. Beautiful. Look at Caterpillar broke out today. Gorgeous. Look at the banks. A lot of call buying going on. You know, Goldman Sachs is, you know, basically a day away, maybe two days away from really, really waking up. Look at, look at the, the storm that Nike has been on, right? So there's other places to kind of park your time okay not necessarily really focus on a day-to-day -day, but when money is being pulled from one group specifically the beta names you have two choices you could still try to short them and again you have to be very very specific in why you want to short them at very specific ranges confirming the bottom 60 minute channels because you can't short them into weakness if you short them into weakness i, I promise you you're going to get killed if you start shorting them midstream into a candle you're going to you know you might get you know you might make some money but there's so many dip buyers that the reversals back are, are significant. So you have to really, uh, you know, you really have to be astute at picking your spots when you're shorting mark, you're shorting stocks uh, in a very, very strong market. But it really does show you, again, how incredible. And again, I, I'm, you, you could run out of superlatives to kind of, kind of even, even fathom, try to explain to another human being 
how historic this market is really, you know, how it really is. Again, amazing considering what's going on. Now, again, slowly but surely, the country is starting to open up little by little. You know, you have all these different states. Like, for example, in New Jersey, um, you had the governor talking about um, uh, restaurants, 25% indoor dining now, capacity, um, you know, little by little, right? Little by little. And again, unfortunately, there's been a lot of collateral damage uh, with a lot of small businesses that are never going to reopen up, which is uh, an incredible shame. But we're starting to, you know, to open up a little bit. Um, we are starting to, especially here in the New York, New Jersey area, the cases are really, they've, they've really stalled out, which is a good thing. So, you know, two months ago in New Jersey, we, we were seeing 4,000 a day. We're like seeing 200 a day now, so which is great. Uh, kids are starting to go back to school. I know a lot of you guys, your kids already started. Uh, we made a choice. Um, my daughter for the first semester will be home. We want to see exactly what happens, doing simulcast. My son will be going in for the first week. They have this really cool setup on their campus that everything is going to be outdoors. Everything is under, under tents, outdoors, uh, so pretty cool there. But, but little by little, obviously the big thing is going to be is there going to be a second wave? And again, you can make an argument when did the first wave stop. But if there's going to be a second wave, we want to see as a country, as a world, right, as, as a, a capitalistic market of doing business, how is it going to affect business the second time around? So I think we'll get our answers somewhere around, you know, late October, November. So everybody obviously will have their fingers crossed. But again, from the, from the historical standpoint of what this market is doing, considering what is happening in the world is just absolutely remarkable. And again, every single day I, I go into the day saying, look, I'm still buying, right? I, I, I still love the market. I still think uh, the strong stocks will get bought. They'll get bought on dips, right, into rising support. Uh, they'll get bought on breakouts. But the most important part, again, like I say, every single day uh, at Morning Strategy, we always have to be conscious of a potential rug pull. We saw that rug pull coming today. Uh, we had two names specifically that we were watching, and those names got murdered, along with everything else uh, in the first hour. And the moral of the story is tomorrow's a new day, right? Again, we can't possibly predict what's going to happen. Um, I have a list of longs. I have a list of shorts for tomorrow. Um, I'm in good both sides of the market. I doubt, and the reason why I doubt you'll see a lot of aggression tomorrow, you know, from, a, you know, names like, um, you know, maybe names like a Netflix or maybe names like an Apple or Square. Again, if you look at all their charts, they're kind of like, like not here, not there. They're in no man's land. They held, if you look, go through the charts, you'll start seeing these stocks held very, very well and they reclaimed their five-day moving average. But if you look at the 60-minute charts, right, they have a lot of work to do. Square uh, and Roku, although Roku is setting up for a very, very sneaky channel uh, for tomorrow. So I'm open-minded uh, for both sides of the market, long side, short side. Uh, but it's very, very impressive, guys. And, and again, um, it's so many people doing well, investors, uh, traders, and, and again, you know, eventually this market will come to a, you know, really screeching halt, especially the average range. But you really do have to appreciate And Again, I don't care what kind of trader you are. You really do have to appreciate how amazing, amazing uh, the action is. So uh, let's talk about uh, today's session. Again, obviously I'm bullish for tomorrow. Very, very specific names. Uh, I do have some names that I like to the downside, but there is a very good rotation. Uh, look at the Dow stocks, guys. Again, look at the Dow stocks. There's only 30 of them. It'll take you three minutes to go through them. Um, and I also like names like a Microsoft uh, that had a nice pivot today, uh, like a Facebook, like a Walmart. If you guys re recall, there is a TikTok kind of deadline. Okay, I believe Trump said, I forgot what day it was, that there has to be bids for them. Those are the names did not get pulled today. If you look at like a Facebook, for example, it held up very, very well. If you look at Microsoft, uh, you know, closed at 52 week highs today, even Walmart, which again, for the life of me, I can't understand what their, their whole premise of the whole TikTok thing is. But again, it held up very, very well. And again, it really does show you how important a platform of TikTok is. And it really shows you how speculation money is willing to bet. Matter of fact, today we saw a really aggressive call buying in the weeklies of uh, Microsoft, the 3250s. Again, anticipation for a possible bid. We saw late day or late afternoon uh, really aggressive call buying. If you look at what Facebook did 
uh, towards the afternoon. You can see, look, look how aggressive, right? Look how really aggressive the move up was. We saw 302 calls, 305 calls, 310, 50 calls on the weekly. So again, uh, a lot of good speculation money continues to roll in the market. Some days they might not reflect your specific sweet spot, whatever kind of trader you are. But ultimately, again, if you are patient, good things are going to happen. So let's talk about today. Um, again, very aggressive. I, I think that's the best way of saying it. Um, so let's talk about this, right? Uh, let's talk about this. So uh, well, let's see, what was the first one? Uh, yeah, this is from last night. So I made this point, okay? I, I made this very specific point. And, and for all you guys that are at home, especially new traders, understand this. There's only one breakout for a stock, okay? If a stock breaks out at 10, the breakout is 10. When the stock's at 12, 13, 14, $15 a share and it's screaming very, very aggressive, it's not breaking out anymore. People use that term incredibly loosely. And the higher a stock is above its breakout level, the higher probability it will fall if you start chasing up improper prices. Exactly, that's what we saw today with this very aggressive rug pull. So just understand there's only one breakout for the stock. Everything else is continuation. So uh, here is the trade. This is definitely the move of the day. Um, I this is the first time I traded Tesla, probably in about a week and a half. It was pretty cool, man. It really was. I love the liquidity. Uh, I love still the average true range. Again, I don't know how long this average true range will last uh, because it's still very, very fresh in the whole uh, split cycle, but I love the liquidity. I love the spreads. The aggression was incredible. Uh, we shorted this thing today. I shorted this thing today uh, to the downside. It was a great move. Then I bought it back on a remount. It was a great move. So th this thing was great today. And uh, again, Tesla, again, when it's all said and done, this will go down in, in the record books for, for any stock that ever traded. No matter how it ends, uh, Elon could do double murder and kill everybody, or the stock could be one of the greatest stocks in, in our generation. We'll see. We'll see how the story plays out. But until then, uh, 470 line in the sand held out twice. Again, why 470 was so important. Uh, if you look at... Uh, the 60-minute view and my 60-minute view, uh, e-signal for some reason has just not updated my Tesla chart after the split. But here is the 60-minute view, right? This is what we were looking at. So here is the 470. This is the big number here. Um, I said if this thing starts building below 470, it can flush. It just got murdered, just absolutely murdered. I thought there was a shot it could get down to 395. It got down to 405. I mean, really, really incredible move. Uh, congratulations for all you guys. Uh, who did catch that. That was definitely just a phenomenal move. Zoom was awesome, okay? Uh, Zoom held 444 twice. If it builds below, it can flush. Again, Zoom, there's nothing wrong with Zoom. Again, uh, the direct uh, beneficiary of the whole stay-at-home movement. Uh, but again, it's just a pure case of gravity. Stocks get tired. That's what we talk about, a buyer strike. So here's the two candles that we talked about, right? Right over here. 444 was low here. 444 is low here. And again, once I, you know, we talked about it, 444, if it builds below, can flush and smash, just absolutely smash when we're down to uh, 410. So, you know, great move there. Really, really great move there. It might have a second day tomorrow just because of momentum, but beautiful move. Uh, FMCI, we, we talked about FMCI. I noticed um, these, uh, these shell companies, that's what they are, uh, SHLL. SPAQ, they're all they're all breaking out. And I said, look, 1885-19 needs to build. It's exactly the same group. Basically, if you miss the, you know, if you miss this $19 area, $20 is a macro breakout from the June 17 highs. And FMCI went nuts. Just just really crazy. I mean, look, look at this move on FMCI. Just went absolutely nuts. It took out the 19, took out the 20, and damn thing almost traded to $24. So huge move there on FMCI. And this is where, you know, I started putting in a lot of pivots to the upside just in case. And you can see the high flyers just all got murdered. Uh, FSLY came nowhere close to 100. Uh, CRM, uh, yes, there was a monster pivot towards the end of the day. It gapped up to the 285 area. And I said, look, for all you guys who have runners or looking to re-enter, it needs to reclaim 285. Obviously, it came nowhere close. Uh, to the 285 area. Uh, Billy traded traded right to the 54 area and died. Uh, Roku went really quickly, uh, rejected three times pre-market. 182 needs to build to reclaim just for cash flow to a possible move to three uh, 184.50s. Uh, again, nice move on Roku. There was nothing wrong on Roku. So here was the, you know, here was the 82 right here. You see this, you see all these channels here, right? 
uh, 182, 182, 182, 182, and broke 182 and right to supply. Uh, I said 184.40s, 184.60s, went right to 185. Again, it's incredibly important to understand where your supply zones are. So good move there as well. Uh, Alibaba came nowhere near 301. Uh, Beyond, you know, failed again at the 136 area. Uh, so, I mean, phenomenal move on, on uh, Roku. Uh, ZM destroyed. Um, perfect move. Perfect, perfect move on, on, on Tesla. And again, what's great about it, 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 it we traded this thing both sides. Okay. I, I shorted this thing, did well, bought the remount. We both, all of us in the live webinar did incredibly well with this thing. Uh, just a great, great trader. Uh, big move on FMCI. Uh, Microsoft broke out today. Uh, 231.15 needs to build. They're coming in for the 234.50s. Uh, you know, nice move. Nice move on Microsoft. I still like it for tomorrow. Uh, again, fantastic moves. Uh, really, really fantastic moves. And here is the pivot towards the... Here was the pivot uh, in the afternoon, uh, 447, 448 needs to build. It traded to four, uh, 451 and a half before selling off again. But again, the afternoon is going to give you some cash flow. Um, and that's it. And that's it. So uh, look, I, I, I think, again, the market is really good. Okay. Uh, are, are you going to get, um, you know, are you going to get everything you want out of the market every single day? Probably not. Okay. Um, I think the greatest gift you have is the ability to sit on your hands until your, um, your, your process gets highlighted. And when it does, usually good things are going to happen. But in the meantime, you have to be a statue. You have to be still sit on your hands until you find that really good green light. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Please arrive uh, to Morning Strategy tomorrow at 9 a.m. And God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.